has been a Peace Corps volunteer, a school teacher, and a criminal defense attorney. He has also written 15 New York Times bestsellers. One of his novels has been made into a movie, another into a TV series, and many have won awards. Nevertheless, Phil has found time to give back to Portland. Not only is he here today to support our library, but he is also co-founder of Chess for Success, a nonprofit that uses chess to teach children study skills. Phil. Different points in my life, libraries have been really, really important for me. Uh, I am a voracious reader. I read about one to three books a week, depending on how big the book is. I could go there and get all the books uh, that I wanted to read and, and take them home and read them and bring them back and get some more. So, so all during elementary school, uh, the access to the library was really important for me. Starting in middle school, uh, there was a different uh, type of assistance I got from libraries. Uh, I, I'm pretty successful now, but if you saw my school grades all the way up through the ninth grade, you would wonder that I'm employed. Uh, <laughs> In New York, where I grew up, we had the honors classes for really, really smart kids, regent, regent classes for the average kid who might, or might not go to college, and non-regents for guys who are going to prison. And I was non-regents all the way through the ninth grade. Uh, I was a CD student. I hated school. Uh, I was down in the principal's office for disruptive behavior all the time. And uh, what, what turned me around really was chess. All I knew was the, the rudimentary moves. And uh, one day I played a, a guy who was on the high school chess team, and he just destroyed me in about two seconds. And he said, you know, you don't know anything about openings. He said, what's an opening? And he said, well, there are, there are certain moves that you're supposed to make at the beginning of a game, and they're in books. And you can learn, you can learn them. So I really like chess, so I went down the library. And for the next few years, I spent all my time going through every book in the library on chess. My grades went up, and I attributed a lot of that to the chess, uh, playing chess. And the way I learned chess was from the library, getting books out of the library. Starting in the 70s, I started uh, writing. And uh, I, I had, didn't have any really formal training in anything, so I didn't really have much confidence in my ability to write. Uh, and then in my mid seventy, in the mid seventies, I sold a short story to a mystery magazine, and I thought, well, maybe I could actually do this stuff. So uh, I got the idea for my first novel. It was going to be a fictional version of the Peyton Allen murders, and I learned about them when I was I was clerking at the Court of Appeals. Now, this was the mid seventies, but these murders occurred in the late fifties, and early sixties was when the investigation was. So I had to learn about this case. I went to the Multnomah County Library, and I went uh, and got the microfilm of the, that they had of all the old newspaper stories and the, some of the true crime magazines that they had. And I was able to do most of my real serious research for that book in the library and uh, eventually got published. But the basis for, for the book, the research, um, was here in the library. In the 80s, I moved my uh, law office over to uh, uh, 1020 Taylor, which is right opposite the site of the library. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but they have words up on the side of the library. They're chiseled in. And it was sort of weird, but right opposite my office on the third floor was law and literature. So although no one's ever accused me of writing literature, not only have I, has my life been changed by, by books that I got out of the library, both entertainment and then teaching me how to study, uh, and then, of course, it's nice to look at, but um, the library has been a character in one of my books. I'll just read you this, this quick thing, and you'll see that it was actually been a character in one of my books. Uh, Amanda Jaffe's the heroine, and she's, she's the heroine in a couple of my books. Amanda walked outside and found herself in the shadow of the Multnomah County Public Library. An idea occurred to her, and she crossed the street. The library, which took up a city block, was Georgian in style with a ground floor fronted by cool gray limestone and upper stories of red brick. 
Amanda climbed the broad granite steps that led to the public entrance and went directly to the history department on the third floor where she found the library index. Row after row of low-tech wooden drawers stuffed with musky index cards arranged by name which gave citations to newspaper articles in which the individuals on the card were mentioned. Amanda pulled out the drawer marked animals treatment and flipped through the cards until she found several for Pedro Aragon. She listed every newspaper uh, story reference on her yellow line legal pad and then did, did the same for Wendell Hayes. When she was finished, she made a separate list of all the stories that mentioned both men. Periodicals was on the second floor and Amanda decided to work from the oldest stories forward. And the oldest reference was an Oregonian article from 1971. The newspaper stories from that far back were only on microfilm. Amanda found the appropriate roll. She fitted it on a spindle attached to a gray metal scanner and turned the dial. The microphone raced across the screen fast enough to give her a headache, so she slowed it down, and eventually she reached the metro section for January 17, 1971, and at the bottom of the column was an update of a story about the investigation into a massacre that took place in December of 1970 in North Portland. The library has been useful to me both for entertainment, enrichment, and, and uh, it stars in one of my books. So uh, I would like to keep the library open. And I think it would be a really good idea for you guys to A, vote for Levy, and B, uh, give this uh, wonderful institution a uh, tax district so they, they don't have to waste all this money every year or every couple of years on campaigns to try to get more money for the library. Because if they get the tax district, then they can use it to keep the doors open longer, buy books, which would be nice, and pay librarians. So I really think you guys should drum up support for both measures and do your best to make sure that they pass. Mm -hmm.